Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed by the title of the video, there is some nonsense going on right now with braces. So uh, bottom line up front, so I believe on the 6th, Q announced that they had received a letter uh, from a ATF agent stating that their honey badger was a SBR in that the brace, which is a custom built brace uh, by SB Tactical for Q, uh, was in fact not a stabilizing brace, but was a stock, therefore rendering the gun a SBR. Obviously they have produced probably thousands of them at this point, and they're already out there in the public. So did that overnight make all of the owners felons? Because constructing a SBR or short barrel rifle without the tax stamp is a felony. So that's kind of where we sit right now. Right now it is the seventh. So um, things are changing rapidly and I have some notes to kind of go through the entire history of what led up to the events yesterday. So uh, that's the bottom line. Additionally, I should point out if you own a brace today like this one right here, are you a felon? No. We'll get to that here in just a second. All right, so I normally, as folks who watch the channel here know, don't use notes, but for this one, <laughs> there's a lot of details, and uh, we'll roll in some screenshots of what I'm actually discussing here as we're going along. So many of you may have remembered this summer, uh, Matt Gates, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's a congressman. He wrote an open letter along with, I believe, four other congressmen to the ATF, basically denouncing the way that they were just arbitrarily interpreting and or regulating uh, laws, particularly having to do with braces and other items as well. Um, it was published on a lot of like gun media and forums and stuff like that. I shared it, but a lot of people really didn't know what the heck was going on. So come to find out, this process to declare the Honey Badger, a SBR, seems to have been kind of in the works for a while. I just highlighted some initial parts of the letter that we're going to read to you guys. I will link down to all of these uh, quoted and cited documents uh, below in the video description. So the congressman wrote, uh, despite initially welcoming the introduction of pistol arm braces that has come to our attention, the ATF is now attempting to restrict some of the most popular arm braces by creating non-public standards, that's key, non-public standards uh, that are not based in statute or regulation. Um, so just it goes down a list of a few things, including length of pull. Um, there's been some, you know, opinions, I guess you could say, by ATF folks stating that uh, having a length of pull over 13 and a half inches, particularly guys who were using the A5 uh, style receiver extensions, uh, would constitute a SBR or using a folding uh, brace adapter that would also give you uh, greater than 13 and a half inches, uh, therefore creating an SBR. As he says here, unbeknownst to the general public, right? That's key. Um, people have to know the laws and a reasonable person should be able to understand the laws. And uh, the ATF is always changing their opinion on that, them, which is why we're here today uh, making this video. Uh, continues on to say, um, even more troubling are the reports that these non-public standards are being used to criminally prosecute unsuspecting gun owners. That's not a good thing. Um, so anyway, the letter goes on in detail. And again, no one really knew what the heck he was getting at at the time. Well, today, uh, or yesterday rather, we learned uh, of the letter that Q received, which said the Firearms and Technology Division, Fat D, love the name, uh, examined the Honey Badger pistol as manufactured and marketed by Q, determined it's a short barrel rifle under the NFA, goes on as to what short barrel rifles are and uh, the punishments for them. The Honey Badger is equipped with a proprietary pistolized, pistol stabilizing brace accessory made by SB Tactical. The firearm has an overall length of approximately 20 to 25 inches and a barrel length of approximately seven inches. And for folks who don't know, if you have a barrel length over 26 inches, or excuse me, an overall length of over 26 inches, that constructs or constitutes a firearm, uh, not a short barrel rifle according to the ATF. So that's why that, that length is important. Further, since it has a barrel of less than 16 inches in length, the firearm also meets the definition of a short barrel rifle under the GCA, Gun Control Act, and uh, NFA. Again, that's absolutely not true. And then it goes on to say further, you market the Sugar Weasel and many fixed firearms in your site, list the site, uh, the objective design features described in your advertisement of the Sugar Weasel in Mini Fix include a pistol stabilizing brace and a rifle barrel of less than 16 inches. Based on the description on your site, ATF believes the firearms uh, are designated and intended, that's key, to be fired from the shoulder and may be classified as short barrel rifles. <laughs> Please note, Fat D makes firearms classifications based on a physical sample of firearms 
as received and this is not an official classification. That's key as well. Following this letter going out to Q, Q released uh, basically the notice that you guys can see right here, um, talking about what the ATF had told them and ending the first paragraph with, at this time, Q has not received definitive guidance from the ATF. And then basically gave folks a couple different options of what they could do if they had a honey badger pistol. Side note, as of right now, Q is offering to pay the tax stamp, the $200 tax stamp, if anybody chooses to SBR their honey badger pistol. Um, so there's kind of another option there as well. That said, guys, in a lot of states, you can't have short barrel rifles. They just, they don't allow it. So if that's the case, you know, they don't have that option, folks who live there. Additionally, um, a lot of people just don't want to deal with the NFA, don't want a registered firearm, those sorts of things. So um, it is an option, though, that they are offering. I just wanted to point that out there. Um, so, and then SB Tactical released a statement as well, the folks who actually make it, and said the ATF is saying in part that they will not evaluate an accessory as a standalone product, but that the characteristics of an entire firearm influence their decision. That's key, that's never happened before. Every other time, like with the bump stock or uh, any number of things that have been evaluated by the ATF, trigger cranks and those things, binary triggers, they've always looked at just the item itself, not the way it's marketed, not the way a firearm comes together, if it has that accessory, those sorts of things. Um, so that is definitely arbitrary. And again, SB Tactical points that out in the last paragraph saying this arbitrary approach is creating confusion and uncertainty for millions of law-abiding citizens, manufacturers, retailers, and wholesalers. And that's key because there are companies that are making firearms with these on them. Now, are they illegally selling and manufacturing SBRs? People buying them, there's gun shops with these firearms in the, on their shelves right now, and they don't know what to do with it. They're confused. So again, they absolutely are uh, creating an unnecessary confusion within the market. Then following up SB tactical statement, Q released sort of a rebuttal through their attorneys. And uh, there's a lot of things in there. And one of them is saying that the letter that they received is deficient and not based on publicly available standards. I agree with that. That's absolutely 100% true. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail at the end of the video. Um, but you guys can see here what they're uh, going over and what they're stating there. And one key is that there it says, the letter, however, does not reveal the standard applied by the Boston Field Division in Boston field division is key in this case in my opinion that we'll get to a little bit later on in concluding that the addition of a stabilizing brace an orthotic device designed and intended to provide the shooter with the ability to more safely uh, use a heavy firearm renders the firearm designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder um, again there's a lot of precedence on this before uh, that what is being stated about the honey badger is not true in that proprietary brace. Uh, the letter's failure to identify legal standard or address apparent conflicts with past rulings raises serious concerns about its, lawf its lawfulness. I agree. Um, as an initial matter, the Administrative Procedure Act, APA, sets forth uh, procedures by which the ATF is accountable to the public in its actions subject to review by the courts. The APA requires the ATF to engage in reasoned decision-making and directs that actions be set aside if they are arbitrary or capricious. The letter continues on citing other legal reasons why they believe it's not valid, but here's kind of a key sentence. Here, the letter does not identify any bolded relevant legal standard for determining whether a firearm is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder, let alone a standard that has been publicly stated in a manner uh, designed to avoid unfair surprise. And that's, again, that unfair surprise is really one of the huge problems with the ATF uh, even believing they have this capability, right? So again, did they just turn thousands of gun owners into felons overnight? I don't think so, but that's what they're attempting to do. And the rebuttal continues on, citing past cases where the ATF has made these sort of regulatory interpretations or decisions. Uh, so for example, in the 80s, ATF uh, held that several decisions classifying certain firearms as machine guns would not apply to the manufacturer or transfer of affected firearms before the date of classification. And the letter continues on, citing other examples where the ATF has made similar types of ruling. So again, what does this mean? If you own a SBA3, A4, any other folding brace out there are you now in possession of an sbr the answer is absolutely not um, right now as of what we know this only applies to the honey badger pistol very specifically so um, what do i think about all this well the first thing i thought about when i was uh, reading the letter and when i got to the signature block there was what the heck is a field agent doing 
making a ruling, right? So many of you may know I have an FFL and an SOT. So I actually am in contact with my local field agent relatively frequently. Uh, I actually asked him the other day about how to destroy a suppressor legally in terms of the actual paperwork behind it, right? He didn't know the answer and said that I should talk to NFA branch. Um, so I did. But anyway, the point of that is field agents, this is not what they do. They do ATF, um, you know, FFL applications and things like that or lost guns that are reported stolen guns that are reported. That's what ATF field agents do. They don't issue opinion letters for the entire ATF. So um, in the past, when these types of letters have come out, it's always been from either somebody who works at NFA branch, which is a division within the ATF headquarters, or somebody who works at ATF headquarters, like talking like GS you know, 15s and up in terms of positions in the government. So relatively high level folks in the ATF make these decisions. Field agents, a local Boston, you know, guy doesn't make these types of determinations, at least never has historically. So all of this, of course, is coming to light today. Um, a lot of people are posting, you know, a lot of memes and stuff like uh, about the president and how he banned bump stocks and now he's trying to go after um, braces. My opinion on that, right? I, again, all of this is coming to light yesterday and today. So mostly within the last 24 hours as of when I'm recording this. And as of when I'm recording this, I've not heard anything out of the executive branch, whether it be the president, the ATF itself, anything like that. Um, just this one, again, Boston field agent is who we have heard from on this matter. So people are out there posting, you know, that Trump banned bump stocks, which he absolutely did. And he absolutely did sanction that and should be held accountable for that, might I add. Um, right now, I am not willing to say that President Trump uh, banned the actual uh, pistol brace on the Honey Badger or is trying to go after any other pistol braces. Obviously, we have an election coming up, right? And if, you know, let's, let's red pill this one, right? So if I, <laughs> if I was a uh, anti-Trump uh, field agent in Boston and I wanted to hurt his perception among gun owners, would doing something like this do that? Yeah, it absolutely would. I'm not saying that's what happened, but the fact that the ATF hasn't made a statement on this and there's been multiple, multiple media inquiries today about it, and the same is true to the executive branch at all levels, and no one said anything, I think, this is my guess, as of you know, 6 p.m. on the 7th, I could be totally wrong, that they're trying to figure out what the heck happened. I think the ATF's trying to figure out what the heck happened, I think President Trump and his staff are probably trying to figure out what the heck happened. Um, and, you know, there have been multiple uh, firearms entities like uh, Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition and others that are, you know, requesting information, requesting more details at the, as to how the heck this happened. Um, right now, we really don't know those answers. Now, I'll say this, if two or three weeks go by and the president, the ATF, or any of their representatives don't clarify the issue on this, then yeah, it's on them. It absolutely is. It's on the president for that. Um, but at this point, you know, one day into it, I don't know. Um, we shall see. I could be wrong. I'm, if you guys watch this channel, I'm one who's definitely not shy about criticizing the president. But at this point, it just seems like a rogue field agent. It's kind of what it seems like to me. So we shall see. Anyway, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, you can always post them down below in the comments section. You can tell me I'm wrong, all of those sorts of things down there as well. It's a free comment section. Do what you want down there. But that's all the information I have for you as of right now. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, you like this type of news update type video, hit the subscribe button because we do them whenever anything like this happens. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.